Well, that's pretty tall. Thanks. <laughs> How's everyone doing? <laughs> Woo! I'm exhausted. I just got back from Afghanistan. I uh, was out there uh, performing for the troops. You know, it was exciting, though. Got some military. Thank you. It's a lot. You know, I love it. I, I was so excited, too, when I found out that I was going to go uh, perform for the troops. Like, I told everybody. I was like, yeah, I'm going to go perform for the troops. May even do some comedy while I'm there. It's a win-win. Win-win. <laughs> Had my Facebook status, like, every day. I was like, yo, performing in Afghanistan tonight. Who wants free tickets? People did respond. I don't think they quite read the post, you know? I was like, really? Like, you're gonna hop a flight? Southwest does not, you know, they don't travel there anymore. <laughs> oh, it was fun. One of the comedians I work with, um, little, little guy, his name is Brad. He's a little midget. Uh, we, went to, we went on this tour together to the Middle East. And uh, so Brad and I, we're at the airport in Afghanistan. It's about five o'clock in the morning. And uh, out of nowhere, this group of like Middle Eastern guys come and sit down directly in front of me and Brad and start staring at us. But like really rudely, you know, they're just like. <laughs> and Brad's like, look, I'm a midget. He's like, I'm used to being stared at. He's like, you're an Italian chick. I'm sure you're used to being stared at. He's like, but I have never been stared at like this. Like, I'm actually like, you know, it's making me nervous. I'm like, I know, I'm like, this is so crazy. What do we do, you know? So Brad looks at me, he goes, we need to blend in. <laughs> I was like, all right, Brad, you're a midget. Um, again, I'm an Italian chick and we're in Afghanistan. How do you think we're gonna blend in? Straight face again, he looks at me, he goes, why don't you let me beat you so they know I'm in charge? <laughs> I got hit, I got hit by a midget, that was fun. <laughs> Felt like a toddler giving me a massage, it was pretty fun. Excited, happy, that's sweet. My name's Sarah Tiana, I'm from Calhoun, Georgia. You probably heard of it, we have a Nike outlet. I don't like to brag, it's a, it's a pretty big deal. <laughs> that's just a joke, there's nothing to do in my hometown. <laughs> the only other cool thing about my town is that we had a daycare center in my high school. <laughs> not for the teachers for the students <laughs> it'd be nothing just to walk to class every day and see a girl pregnant out to here carrying three more that was just a Thursday not a big deal and these girls go walk around barefoot and pregnant all day and I still had to wear shorts that were two inches below my fingertips freaking Mormon culottes or something <laughs> I was like, oh, hey, Mr. Vice Principal, I don't think short shorts are the problem. I think a six pack of Budweiser and a vagina are the problem. <laughs> they got all cocky and they put up this sign at my school that said, hey, teenage pregnancy doesn't come without consequences. I was like, oh, yeah. So I put up a sign that said, Ford trucks don't come without beds. Get used to it. <laughs> to get used to that. <laughs> it was always the white girls at my school that got pregnant. It was always the white girls. It was never the black girls, you know? It was never the Mexican girls. Because they weren't allowed in our school. That's different. I think that's... <laughs> that's different. It's not a big deal. I am, uh... <laughs> I'm not pregnant. I'm not even close to being pregnant. I'm 28 now and I'm single. So in LA, I'm a commodity, but in the South, I'm a lesbian, apparently. <laughs> it really sucks, you know? And it's so hard, it's so hard to date men out here, you know, because men in Los Angeles think the women are difficult and they cry about it all day, right? Ladies like, women are so difficult. <laughs> women are so difficult. But I know that's not me, because every guy I've ever met told me I was easy, so phew! <laughs> Got <to> that bullet. <laughs> worry about that. <laughs> I have a lot of tough, bad luck with guys, you know. I, had, I went out with this guy that got a happy ending massage while we were together. <laughs> I know, sir. Guilty. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, he got a happy, and so as a woman, you know, your pride is a little hurt. You know, oh, what am I going to do to get back at him? So I decided I was going to get a happy ending massage. That's right. Tit for tat, ladies. That's how I roll, all right? So I made the appointment, I'm laying on the table, I had this really hot male masseuse, and I'm laying there, you know, and he's like, what do you want? And I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I want a 
happy ending. <laughs> you know? So he spooned me and told me I was pretty. <laughs> I think I love him. <laughs> I guess it's the pickup lines, you know, that are the hardest. The men, men have so many ridiculous pickup lines, right? This guy came up to me the other day and he's like, hey, baby, what's your sign? Do not enter, whatever. I don't know <laughs> what my sign is. He's like, oh, that's really funny. You must be a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> Strike two. I am a comedian, actually. He goes, well, aren't you a little cute for a comedian? I said, aren't you a little unprofessional for a gynecologist? I don't know. Just wondering. I have a warped outlook on men, and I know that because the last guy I dated was an Arab. Which is cool, you know, because I've never dated anybody from England before. It's like... I was like, good day, mate, but he didn't get it. He was stupid, <laughs> you know? <sighs> and I guess Arabs and Jews are in this big fight over in Japan, wherever they live, and it's a big deal. <laughs> they all hate each other. So I sat him down one day, and I was like, hey, you know, what happened over there in Japan? I want to help. <laughs> He's like, oh, well, the Jews think that they're the chosen people. I was like, uh, Jews aren't the chosen people, Mexicans are the chosen people, all right? Because they actually name their kids Jesus, <laughs> right? And that takes the balls. <laughs> and it makes sense, right? Because Jesus was a carpenter, and like, all they do all day is sit in front of Home Depot. <laughs> so, that makes sense. Just... Just waiting to be chosen, I think. I don't know. It just makes sense to me. I always thought, you know, I think I, I think I'm a catch, you know. I don't know why guys and I and I don't really get along, you know. I, I love sports, you know, I'm a big sports fan. The only sports I don't really like is basketball, you know, it's the only sport I can't get into. So I think it's kind of boring because I don't feel like anybody starts trying into the last two minutes of the game. Does anybody get that? Like I, every time I watch it, I'm like, yeah, all right. Oh, now you're gonna start trying. Really? Two minutes left. This is like every bad sexual experience I've ever had in my life. <laughs> I'm like, hurry up, quit dribbling, and freaking shoot! <laughs> I have another game in half an hour. This is, <laughs> hurry it up. Let's hear it, get a white chick up here, right? <laughs> a little cream in this Oreo cookie. I'll take that roll. How you guys doing? You're looking good. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of my family and friends. Last time it was a drinking intervention. <laughs> Dude, so I found out some good news today that now available over the counter is the morning after pill. Yeah, a couple of whores excited about that. <laughs> Shit. They'll be happy when you're banging your boyfriend later and your condom breaks. Shit, so they call it like plan B, but I was wondering like, what's plan A? Like they just skipped right over it. You know, is it a good old fashioned punch to the gut? You know, the old one, two? Right, like the banana peel trick. Bitch slips down a staircase. She tried it. That's why she has no kids here tonight. She's rolling solo. That's how you do it. Dude, so I was having a bad hair day today. I almost just waxed the whole motherfucker off. Are you shaved, wax? What's up, girl? Thumbs up. Like, why do I even care? Like, I'm gonna dyke out with you later? Like, that's the kind of girl, she's like bleach blonde, big boobs, you know she takes care of that snatch. <laughs> right? <laughs> Shit. So, uh, <laughs> I'm setting you up, dude. Any single guys in here? Yeah, I think you just really set me up. <laughs> Absolutely. We got single guys in here. I saw some guys come in together tonight. Rolling in with their wingman. We got some wingmen in the audience. Yeah. You guys all know what a wingman is, right? Yeah. yeah, of course he does. He's rolling out with his. It's the guy that comes with you to make sure you get laid. Right? You know, he's got, 
He's what? He's taking one for the team? Definitely. He's running like interference, like talking to the fat chick so your buddy can hook up with a hot girl. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Exactly. Dude, I have an older brother. Like, I roll out with him. I take the role of the wingman, you know, the wing chick. Ain't that right? You know, he's like telling bullshit lies to the girls. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. That's my brother. He doesn't bone on the first date. He's a romantic like that. (laughs) Yeah, and he'll call you the next day. Hope you don't mind that, too. (laughs) No, see, I live with my brother. So we come home. There's two girls. He takes the hot one in his room. Who do you think has to sleep with the fat chick? Me, the wingman. Take one for the fucking team. No, I mean, this started like back in high school. Like I'd have friends spend the night. We'd be all watching TV, something dirty, and I'd look over, I'd see my brother starting to scoot a little closer to my friend. I'd be like, you know, Mel, I'm starting to get kind of tired. I'm gonna go to sleep now, but uh, if you wanna stay down here, I don't care, dude, hook up with my brother. What are friends for, man? <laughs> you know, and then I would always have to fuck with her, and I'd be like, yo, if you do hook up with my brother tonight, tell me if he has a big dick. Okay. <laughs> Not... <laughs> right, no. Not because I give a shit how big his junk is. I'm just planting the seed so she's thinking about it and feels obligated to grab his cock. I'm just hooking her brother up. <laughs> Hey man, who do you think made up bros before hoes? Yes. <laughs> As you can tell, yes, I am dirty. You guys want me to keep going? Yeah, yeah this guy's like, yeah, keep going. I like it. Oh. <laughs> Dude, I knew like ever since I was a little girl. Like my grandma used to tell me, she's like, Jill, you're so pretty until you open your mouth. And I was like, yeah, right, Grandma. It wasn't until my mouth was open that my boyfriend told me I was pretty. (laughs) Even my mom, like, my mom's so proper, and she's like, your language is so unladylike. You're such a turnoff. I'm like, well, good, Mom. I'm not trying to turn you on. Like, I know I came out of it, but I ain't looking to go back in. But I'll hop back on that titty. (laughs) Oh, man. Okay, you know, though, I'll be honest. Like, sometimes I even offend myself. Like, (laughs) you know, like when I'm tickling the old hoo-ha. If you will, dinging the cowbell. dirty to myself it's disrespectful you know I'm like oh yeah Jill you like that you dirty bitch you want me to slide you home and I'm like Jill come on it's so disrespectful Ooh, I like that oh man so I just ran into some are oh, you like that you you talk dirty yourself too yeah oh she's grabbing her own titties all right, guys, this girl right here, she's already primed. What are you drinking? Wine. Some red wine, wine dine. 69, this bitch. No. Someone give it to her. She's sitting all alone. There's a chair available. <laughs> you won't be alone tonight. <laughs> Dude, so I ran into some friends from high school before the show, and I was thinking how fun high school was. Dude, I was a good student. I got... Only two C's throughout high school. Lasted me all year. (laughs) No, but actually, I did really good on test. I just, I used to get like so nervous waiting for the results. And you guys know that one big test you take at the end of senior year, like determines if you go to college or not. It's like, thank God I passed that AIDS test. (laughs) Did anybody in here ever cheat? I mean, come on, it was so easy. Dude, my science teacher never knew I was cheating on him with my math teacher. (laughs) Boy, did I learn about circumference that summer. (laughs) Anybody in here ever do a little extra credit? (laughs) Yeah, these two girls are looking at each other. So, uh... My boyfriend and I broke up because he told me that I was too silly 
And I was like, dude, you're dating a comedian, you know? It's not like I was laying there naked wearing nothing but clown shoes holding a rubber chicken. <laughs> you know, and he would always tell me, he's like, talk dirty to me, Jill. And I was like, oh yeah, baby, fuck me silly. Hope somebody already did, honk, honk. <laughs> I'm like, you can't fuck me till I catch me. Da, 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 da. I think I figured it out. I think it's... <laughs> it's all because I think one time I was going down on him and I, I couldn't help but pretend his dick was a microphone. I was like, is this thing on? Testies, testies. One, two. <laughs> like, what's your name, sir? What do you do? <laughs> like, you're gonna sing you a ditty. It's a small world after all. Yeah, but come on now, with a dick that size, the joke was on him. <laughs> As you guys could imagine, we didn't really have that much in common, so when we did, it was really exciting. Yeah, really exciting the day I found out that we both liked it up the ass. <laughs> you know, and it was always funny that, like, he got mad at me for being silly, because how can I take him seriously? You know, he always says shit like, oh yeah, who's your daddy, who's your daddy? You know, and I'm like, do girls really want to think about their dad when they're fucking? <laughs> I mean, maybe he did. Maybe his dad fucked him in the ass and that's why he oh, likes it. <laughs> yeah, and what's with you? Want me to come on your tits? What are you, decorating a fucking cake here? I am a feminist. I'm a feminist, but I got into a fender bender the other day and this bitch... This bitch steps out of the vehicle in these like stripper heels and these booty short. And it was just two cheeks, one short, do you know? <laughs> just a cascade of ass on the sidewalk, tits up to her eyeballs. And I was like, excuse me, ma'am, can I see your driver's license? And her response to me was, and I found myself looking like a fellow, like adult woman, human being in the face. And I was like, we aren't equal. <laughs> That's what I thought, guys. I thought we shouldn't have the same right to vote. <laughs> like I should get four votes. You don't need any votes. Which is mean, that's mean. But then I looked at her car and I realized like I'm judging this woman, but she is doing so much better than me on every possible level. She was driving like an S-Class Mercedes with a leather interior. I drive the equivalent of like a shopping cart with an engine. <laughs> and I realized at that moment that all my life I've been using like 100% of my brain, but I should have been using like 18% of my vagina. <laughs> Because this is the money spot. <laughs> Rings and mortgages and car payments and 401ks, ladies and gentlemen. 401ks, you could do a dance for it. There's a woman clapping in the front. She's older, she knows. 401ks. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 401ks, guys. And I'm not saying that you want to use like 100% of your vagina. You're using 100%. If you're using 100%, then you're a Kardashian. You know what I mean? Yeah, no good. No good. You're a Playboy bunny. If you're using 0%, though, then you're like Condoleezza Rice or Madeline Albright or a Gollum in a cave. It's just like... And that is where I have been operating from, in the zero percent. All I'm saying is that sexuality is like blood pressure. You just want to get it in a healthy range. Just like that 18 to 35 percent range. So, besides substitute teaching, my lucrative substitute teaching job, I have another job. I get paid to let medical students who are practicing gynecology <laughs> Apply their trade on me. Now, some of you may be wondering right now, is she serious? 
how much does that pay? <laughs> or maybe just how do I get involved? <laughs> I'm dead serious. It pays a butt load or a vagina load in my case. <laughs> and I have had 178 pap smears. since last week. <laughs> now the job is really quite easy. <laughs> After you get over your initial feeling of being gang banged. <laughs> so what's it like? Let me paint you a picture. I'm lying on my back in a room Grateful I'm about to be intruded upon by a steel instrument rather than keeping 21st graders from choking on paste. <laughs> and the room I'm in, it's surrounded with video cameras because they record the whole interaction so that the students can learn from the tape. <laughs> now they tell me that that tape is for the students' benefit, but I can't help but think that somewhere out there is a website for papsmearhose.com. <laughs> and I'm on it. <laughs> Which also means at some point I'm gonna have to explain to any future children, mommy was a medical university porn star. <laughs> With over 354 films under her belt, literally under her belt. And she worked with both men and women. I gotta say, I do prefer the women. They just understand the anatomy better. So let's face it, these male medical students, they're nerds. They've had their noses in books, not in a vagina. Mine is probably one of the first they've ever seen. So as he comes stumbling towards me with a set of steel clamps with a crank on the side of it, dude, I just lie there like an old hooker and think about the money. It's great though. Part of my job is at the end of the day, I get to give these guys feedback on their performance. And I always end up giving them the same advice I give to my first graders learning to write. I tell them, go slow, take your time. Stay between the lines. And hold it like this. One time I met this guy and you know, things are going pretty good, you know. We go back to his place, so I assume we're gonna, you know, smoke weed. <laughs> then he's like, I don't smoke marijuana. And I was like, why not? He's like, cause one time I was smoking the marijuana and I was high for five days. I'm thinking, wow. My dealer sucks. <laughs> I have the stuff where you pass out in front of your TV with chicken fingers in your lap. <laughs> I went to the gay bar the other night with my lesbian friend. I'm not gay. I was just there because it was dollar beer night. <laughs> but I felt really bad because I was scared that like maybe I was like getting in on her game, you know? So I decided to play matchmaker. So I'm like, uh, I think you should go for that girl over there. She's cute. She's like, Christina, that's a granola lesbian. I was like, what's a granola lesbian? She's like, you know, a girl who doesn't shower and shave a lot. I was like, I think I'm a granola heterosexual. <laughs> Ladies, you think you need to do all that stuff before you hook up with a guy? You think you need to shower and shave and wear cute undies? I've tested that theory out many times. Let me tell you what happens when you don't do all that stuff. It's still a go. <laughs> <laughs> I've bragged about now showering. I've like done one of those burps through my nose. <laughs> At the end of the night, a chick is still a chick. <laughs> Some women play hard to get. I play hard to want. Thank you very much. You guys have been a great crowd.